the jury agreed upon a verdict? We have, Your Honor. Hey, Monaghan, bet you ten bucks the boss gets him off. You're smart. We, the jury, find the defendant not guilty. The thing you didn't bet. So long, Flatfoot. I'll see you again. In the bag from the start, eh, Counselor? Take your arm off of me. Well, I just wanted to thank you. I don't want your thanks. All I want from you is that fee agreed upon, and I want it in my office today. It'll be there. Get it better. Well, Mr. District Attorney, that's one case I wish I'd lost. As long as alibis are a dollar a dozen, men like Gooch will walk out of here free, if they're smart enough to hire you for their lawyer. That lies between a dirty crack and a pretty compliment. Which is it? Come over to my office and I'll tell you. All right. See you boys at Joe's in a half an hour. Yeah, Sit down, man. Thank you. I just heard a funny thing from one of the newspaper men. He tells me that whenever you're the attorney for the defense in an important criminal case, all the newspapers set up their headlines in advance. Defendant acquitted. It's got so the newsboys are yelling extras before the jury's verdict has been read. That's right. They found out that I was good for circulation. You'd make the front page yourself, Jim, if you were a good copy. I'm not a good copy. I don't work for the newspapers. I work for the public. At least I try to. Sounds like you're rehearsing for your next campaign. There isn't going to be any next campaign for me. I wouldn't have a chance after what you've done to me. I've got another job cut out for myself. Judge? No. Executioner. I'm going after you, Matt. I'm going to make it my business to put you where you belong, in prison. I'll do it if it takes the rest of my life. You and who else? The dull, slow-thinking, slow-moving public. Ever since you won your first case, you've invoked the law to protect the lawless. You've faced a lot of juries, and you've wheedled and tricked and finagled them into doing your bidding. But someday you're going to face a real jury, the true grand jury, the people, and they'll destroy you. Not bad, Jim, not bad. You ought to put a few of those tremolo stops in the courtroom. You might win a case once in a while. Well, I gotta be going. I'm on my way to the Hamden Law School to hand out diplomas to a bunch of babes who think they're gonna be honest lawyers. See you later. I have invited here today to distribute these diplomas, one of our very own. I take great pleasure in welcoming back to this hall, from which he himself graduated, the most brilliant attorney that this law school has ever turned out, Mr. Matthew Mitchell. Dean Lambert, gentlemen of the faculty, honored guests, and fellow students. I'm glad the dean specified state bar, for I've been accused of being an ornament of many bars. <laughs> the reason that I'm not attired befitting this occasion is that when the dean's invitation was phoned my office, I was at my favorite bar downtown. <laughs> it is my belief that every witness should be given several drinks of good liquor before being put on the stand to get from them the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, rather than by the usual routine of swearing them in. I am such a witness here today testifying before you. Having hoisted a few myself, I am in the mood to give you the truth, rather than the choice bits of hooey that you've expected to hear. If Mr. Blackstone knew of my experiences in court, he would turn over in his grave to see what has become of his basic structure of law to protect society. 
And the last thing that he would find in a courtroom today is a lawyer with any regard for justice. It is not too late, young ladies and gentlemen. You still have time to become honest carpenters, plasterers, stenographers, and saleswomen. I've been asked to hand out your diplomas. I can't do it. I won't be a party to it. And if this be treason, gentlemen, make the most of it. Say, why didn't you tell us you was going to do a thing like this? Man, I'd have been in the front row. I wished I was there. Me too. Mitchell was drunk, says dean of law school. And he was. <laughs> <laughs> well, we asked to resign from alumni association. As long as they don't ask me to resign from the bar, it's all right with me. <laughs> oh, he's better looking than that. Observe, gentlemen, page one in every issue. What did you do it for? The Bar Association prohibits its members from advertising. Advertising, gentlemen, is the art of getting people interested in you and talking about you. This type of advertising money can't buy and the Bar Association can't bar. Yeah, <laughs> Mr. Lemon, they'll run you out of town. Who? Did I mention any names? Mabel's still waiting. Tony! Well, gentlemen, I gotta be leaving you. And now you can rip me up the back to your heart's content. Set them up for the boys. Come on, Rocky. Mabel's waiting. Wait here, Rocky. Best you say, Chief. Hello, Mabel. Hello, Mr. Mitchell. Thanks. I didn't do it, Mitchell. Didn't do what? Kill Baloo. Of course you didn't. He died of heart failure when the gun went off in your hand. But I'm innocent. I swear to you that I'm innocent. Get out the gas, Mabel. You got the jitters. Sit down. I've handled 36 murder cases so far, and I've yet to run against a client who is guilty. At least, that's what the jury say. Yeah, I know, but this is different. I did take the gun, but he grabbed it away from me. He hit me and knocked me into the next room. The next thing I knew, I heard a couple of shots. I ran to the door. You're not even listening to me. Cross my heart, Cross Mitchell. Cross your I'm... legs. What for? Cross them. OK, self-defense. But why? Two swell reasons, left and right. Well, I swear to you that I that didn't shoot him. That isn't the important thing. The main thing is how you face it. What do you mean, financially? Well, I didn't mean spiritually. Well, I got a few pennies. All right. I'll arrange bail for you. See me in my office in the morning. But I swear to you, Mitchell, that I... 11 o'clock shop at my office. Mr. Bradner isn't here anymore. How did you get in? I sneaked in. Who are you? So you decided to take your diploma in spite of what I said? Because of what you said. Well, what is it? A protest committee or something? Oh, oh no, no. I, uh, I represent a, a committee on employment. A committee of one. I'm looking for a job, Mr. Mitchell, in your office. After what I said? Oh, I, I didn't believe a word of it. You see, uh, I selected law as a profession because I thought it was the finest and cleanest of all the professions. <laughs> I still think so. Well, then you don't want to work in my office. Oh, yes, I do. Only in your office. How come? because you're the smartest, most brilliant lawyer in town. Hmm. Joan, eh? Bog, this is Miss Hayes. She's coming to work here as a law clerk. See that she gets a desk. Yes, sir. Uh, give her gardener's office. Oh, Mr. Mitchell, how can I... None of that, or I'll change my mind. This way, Miss. 
Isn't this wonderful? Say, Chief, while we was down at the county jail, I dropped in to see Cooney. Yeah? Well, the case is right in your lap if you want it. It'll get you more front page publicity than anything you ever handled. Listen, Rocky, the kidnapping racket too smelly. I wouldn't touch it with a nine-foot pole. If the child had been returned alive, he might have stood a chance. Now it isn't even a thousand to one shot. I haven't lost a case, and I'm not starting. Forget it. Well, just as you say. Yes, sir. Fog. Yes, sir. Uh, that young lady we just hired, send her in. Right away. Have a little drink? No, thanks. Don't use it? Well, not so early in the day. You know, it just occurred to me that we overlooked a very important detail in your employment here. Yes? The matter of your compensation. Oh. Oh, that isn't important. As a matter of fact, I was prepared to pay you a fee, if necessary, for the privilege of working for you. That's a very nice thing to say, even if you don't mean it. But I do. You see, I made up my mind that when I graduated from law school, I wouldn't work for anybody but you. Why? Well, you were responsible for my deciding to go to law school. Mr. Mitchell, I've followed your career ever since I was 16. I've attended practically every one of your trials. I think maybe I know more about you than you do yourself. I can assure you that I meant every word that I said at the graduation exercises. Oh, no, you didn't. That was just a publicity stunt. <laughs> if you really believed what you said, you wouldn't be staying in the business. My dear young lady, before you go any further, I must warn you. I'm unethical, completely unscrupulous, a publicity hound, and a man with a profound weakness for pretty girls. I... I don't believe you'd ever be weak about anything. At least, uh, not during office hours. Oh, yes. I never let business interfere with my weaknesses. Will you kindly tell me how a girl with eyes like yours ever happened to study law? Isn't that rather an old line for a clever lawyer to be using? It's the old lines that get results with juries and women. Well, it's... If you're through with me, Mr. Mitchell, I'll... Uh... I'm not through with you. I haven't even started. I asked for a position in your office because I've admired you for a long time. But I did come here to work. All right. You can go to your office, Joan. I'm going to call you Joan. And don't say that I didn't warn you. But I tell you, Matt, I didn't do it. I'm innocent. All right, Mabel, I'll take your statement just to hear how it sounds. But I didn't shoot him. Go ahead, let's have it. Well, the gambling ship had been closed down for a couple of weeks. A blue pulled a few strings and it opened up again. I guess you know more about that than I do, Matt. There was a big crowd on board that night and a lot of dough. Blue was feeling pretty good. He'd been drinking like a fish all day. Oh, I had a couple myself, but I was cold sober compared to him. That night, in his cabin, we had a little argument. Yeah, just a chisel. But I tell you, I didn't go up there with him, Monty. Now, don't tell me. Six people saw you. Well, what if I did? You're nothing but a double-crosser and a two-timer. Yeah, and another thing, I'm sick of paying a whole picket and outfit dough for keeping tabs on you. We're through. Not until you kick in, Monty. Whoever told you this was a one-way option? You gotta pay off. Come through, not for a dollar. No, not even for a dime. No? Well, not even Mitchell could spring you if I cut loose. 
I got enough on you to fill a Sears Roebuck catalog. Now, what do you think would happen if you did open your yacht? Well, never mind what would happen to me. Just think of what would happen to you. I'll take care of you so you won't. Don't you come near me. I'll kill you if you touch me. I was only kidding. We're, we're just losing our... Give me that gun. Give me that gun. Why, you... Drop that gun. Drop that gun. Don't hit me, Mommy. Please don't. Now stay there. There he was, laying on the floor with a rod beside him. And that's the truth, Matt, I swear it. That's just what happened. That's what you say. Now listen. I'll tell you what really did happen. Do you want notes taken on this too, Mr. Mitchell? Yeah. You were upstairs playing roulette. Baloo came over and invited you down to his cabin to have a drink. He didn't want to go, but he persuaded you. Well, you went down and you had a few drinks. He must have doped one, because when you woke up, when you woke up, Mabel, Baloo was drinking heavily. He invited you to join him. You refused. Your only thought was escape, but he barred the door. Then he said to you, listen, honey, don't be that way. The night is young. The party's just starting. Ah, uh, you don't see that. You listen to me. That's what happened on the boat, and you know it. You were trying desperately to escape, but he was stronger. He stifled your cries. His brute hands almost choked you. The little fingers clawed at his face. That infuriated him. He whipped out his gun. You grabbed his wrist to get it away. In the struggle, the gun went off. And Baloo sank to the floor. You stood there, bewildered. And the door opened, and this fellow Gentry came in. He found you staring at the crumpled body. That's it. Eight copies, Miss Hayes. Eight copies. Yes, sir. There you are. Self-defense. Well, I swear to you, Matt, that I didn't... Now, sit down, Mabel. Sit down. I want to look at you. You're booked to play Little Red Riding Hood. But you're more the type of Lucretia Borgia. Well, you can't help how you look, can you? What we're after is something simple, sweet, unsophisticated. <laughs> a bewildered little stranger in a big city. <laughs> Get me? I was only 16 years old when I first met Mr. Ballou. I didn't know very much about men then. And Mr. Ballou sized up to me like a... Seemed to me. Oh, yeah. Seemed to me like a responsible businessman and, oh, a perfect gentleman. I was a stranger, alone in the world. He was so nice and sympathetic. And there was no one around to warn me and tell me what he really was. Thank you, Chip. Handkerchief for the ammonia. There was nobody to tell me that he was a married man who had deserted his wife and his family. He won my trust and confidence. And I had no idea that he didn't intend to marry me. Legs. I was horrified when I learned about his racket. Business. Business. I told him I could never have anything to do with a man who, who made his money out of gambling. He told me he intended to sell his gambling ship. Since meeting me, he said he wanted to lead a different life. But this time, I had learned to love and to trust him. So, when he asked me to visit him on the gambling ship, I couldn't see any harm in it. There must have been something in the drink he gave me because I lost consciousness. And when I came to, there was only one thought in my mind. I wanted to get away. I opened the bedroom door, and there he was in his cabin, drinking. Then and there, I knew what had happened. He saw me as I came through the door. He was in a terribly ugly mood. I started for the door to leave. I wanted to run up on the deck. I was ready to throw myself in the water if he followed me. <laughs> when?
when was Mitchell ever ethical? He grabbed a hold of me. I begged him to let me go, but he wouldn't. I tried to scream, but he put his hand over my mouth. I bit and I scratched trying to get away from him. He cursed me, and then he pulled a gun out of his pocket. I thought he was going to kill me. We struggled, and I tried to get the gun away from him. Then, all of a sudden, the gun went off. And he, he slipped to the floor. Where you been? Out for a beer? No, I called up the boss. Told him to set up an extra. Maybe Wilson quit it. Cinch. I have my own reasons for refusing the Cooney case, Mr. Castro. I thought you were smart, Mitchell. There's plenty of dough in this if you win. We got a strictly airtight alibi. I'm a very busy man. My present clients take up most of my time. Good day. Talk English and quit stalling. What do you got against Cooney? If you want to know what I've got against Cooney, I'll tell you. I don't like the kidnapping racket. It smells. Hey, you've gone to bat for lots of tough hombres before. You can't take a walkout powder now. I've always chosen my own clients. Yeah, that's what you think. Listen, Mitchell. You're a criminal lawyer. There are lots of us bringing you business in this town for a long time now. And you made plenty of dough out of your racket. And I've gotten you off. Do you want me to be grateful? You gotta stick with the crowd that's been your friends. You can't turn your pals down just because you don't like the way a piece of business smells. Suppose we all walk out on you. You're not trying to threaten me, are you? Now listen, Mitchell. There's been plenty of times when you needed us. Like for a witness at the last minute or an alibi. We've been good fellas. We kept our mouths shut. That puts you on our side of the law. Now we're in a spot. You've got a stick. Do you get me? Our business in the past has been strictly confidential. For your sake as well as mine. Well, who says anything's gonna be spilled? I'm just reminding you. That's all. And if the Cooney case is no dice with you, that's okay with us too. That's your funeral, not ours. Wait a minute, Castro. How many people did you say saw Cooney the afternoon the child was kidnapped? Five. Five. And if we need more, we can get him. Time is it? What day is it? What year is it? Shall I tell Rocky to get the car and take you home? What for? Well, you've been up all night, haven't you? No, as a matter of fact, I overslept. We hit this couch at 5.30 and here it is 10. Four hours sleep's enough for anybody. <sighs> Did you ever hear the story about burning the candle at both ends? Yes. My candle burns at both ends. It will not last the night. But all oh, my foes and all my friends, it gives a lovely life. If you were married and had wait a Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't you go any further. If you think you're going to rope me anything like that, young lady, you're mightily mistaken. If I made up my mind to marry you, nobody could stop me. <laughs> what about me? <laughs> Least of all, you. But that isn't what I was going to say. What were you going to say? If you were married and had a family, you never would have taken that Cooney case. Well, I've heard you say a dozen times you wouldn't have anything to do with that case. 
Unless you could act as special prosecutor against Cooney. That's right. Well, what made you change your mind? See, there you go. Putting me on the spot and you're only working for me. What would you do if you were married to me? I'd take you in hand and do you over. Hmm. And mold me to your heart's desire? Oh, thanks. Ah, now for a little breakfast. It'll be a tough job, all right. Say, you don't approve of me, do you? If ever a man needed a guide, mentor, manager, and mother, it's you. What's the matter with me? Everything. I've been looking over your books, Mr. Mitchell. In the past five years, you've taken in over a million dollars in fees. Your bank balance this morning is just $84.11. Maybe that's why I took the Cooney case. You've given most of that money away to hangers-on and backslappers who call you chief and the big shot. Why, right now, you've got a pension list twice the size of your payroll. Maybe I'd better cut down on my payroll. Might be a good idea for you to fire some of those ex-crooks you've got working for you. Take Gardner, for instance. How much of a fee did he pay you when you defended him on the embezzlement charge? I don't remember. I know. He paid you $1,000. Then you gave him a job in your office, and inside of three months, he'd stolen 5000 from you. <laughs> You're always giving a job to every Tom, Dick, and... And Joan. If you'll take the trouble to look it up, you'll find out that I've been working here so far without one cent of salary. What? Mm-hmm. Why didn't you say something? Charlie. Yes? Why wasn't Miss Hayes put on the payroll? You forgot to tell me. Well, what if I did? Do I have to think of everything? Thirty dollars a week. Thirty dollars a week? Why, she's more than a law clerk. Why, she's my guide, mentor, manager, and mother. Make it fifty. Does that suit you? No, it doesn't. You're a sucker, as usual. It's just twice what you ought to pay me. Mr. Mitchell, I'll work for you for nothing if you'll do something for me. What's that? Don't take the Cooney case. You'll get $50 a week. Now, save your breath. Before I refuse to accept your resignation, I would like to know the reason for it. I came here because I wanted to work in a law office. Well, isn't this a law office? No. It's an outlaw office. <laughs> you get the case of a woman who swears she's innocent. You make her plead guilty, and then you get her off. Well, an innocent person is acquitted. Now, what's wrong with that? If Mabel Wilson didn't kill Baloo, somebody else did. And that somebody is free and protected from the law because she admitted the killing. What does that make me? An accessory after the fact. So that's why you're acquitted? No, it's the Cooney case. Oh, I'm not going to annoy you talking about it anymore. But I brought Mrs. Evans down here to see you. I thought she might have some influence. Evans? Maybe you've forgotten there was a child kidnapped and murdered. Mrs. Evans is the mother. She's outside waiting. You had no right to make any such appointment. I had my own reasons for taking the Cooney case. Reasons that you know nothing about. I know your reasons. Money and publicity. That's all you're interested in. Mr. Mitchell's office. Just one moment, please. Here's your party. I'm sorry I got you down here, Mrs. Evans. You mean he won't see me? Well, I'm afraid it wouldn't do any good, even if he did. Oh. I'll wait. All right, dear. I'm Mrs. Ballou. I'd like to see Mr. Mitchell, please. Have you an appointment? No. Uh, Mr. Mitchell wants me to take care of Mrs. Ballou. I'm Mr. Mitchell's assistant. Will you step into my office? Thank you. Mr. Mitchell's office. Mr. Fogg? Here's your party. Sit down. Thank you. I guess you think it's funny, me being here. But I don't know any other lawyers. 
Well, I'm sure we'll be glad to do anything we can for you, Mrs. Ballou. Perhaps I should hate Mr. Mitchell getting that Wilson girl off after she killed Monty. But if he treated her anything like he treated the children and me, he deserved it. Well, what is it you'd like to know? About the estate. The estate? Well, it isn't exactly what you'd call an estate, but there were some papers. You see, Monty didn't spend much time at home, but he kept a few things there. He was very particular about keeping these papers hidden. May I see them, please? Have they any value? Well, it all depends on what these IOUs represent, Mrs. Ballou. If we can prove they're loans, we can sue Gentry and collect, if there's anything to collect from a man like that. But in all probability, they're just gambling debts, and it's almost impossible to do anything with them. Well, I just thought I'd see. i tell you what I wish you would do. Leave these with me, and don't say anything about it to anybody, not even Mr. Mitchell. I'd like to handle this case myself. Do you think they may mean something? Well, you can't tell. They might mean an awful lot. Perhaps we can get Gentry to settle for something. In any event, we'll try. Thank you. It certainly will come in handy. If there's any news, I'll phone you right away. And be sure not to say anything to anybody. I understand. Goodbye. Goodbye. Gentry. What is it? I'm Miss Hayes from Matthew Mitchell's office. Oh. What does Mitchell want with me? It's about Mrs. Ballou. Yeah? Yeah. Well, uh, come in. Thank you. Sit down. Why did Mitchell send you? Why didn't he come himself? I'm taking care of Mrs. Ballou's affairs. Are you going to pay her that money? I don't get you, girlie. Maybe you got me mixed up with somebody else. Who says I owe Mrs. Ballou any money? What about those IOUs you gave to Monty Ballou? They amount to almost $20,000, you know. What's the idea? Mitchell gets Ballou's dame off for croaking him, and now he's representing the widow. How does that tie in? Mrs. Ballou brought the IOUs to our office and asked us if we could collect them. Has Mitchell got those IOUs? We'll be very glad to turn them over to you after you settle with Mrs. Ballou. Now, don't you worry about Mrs. Ballou, young lady. I'm going to take care of her. I think you'd better, Mr. Gentry. I'm sure you'll feel much easier when you have those IOUs in your own hands. Goodbye. Mrs. Evans is still waiting, Mr. Mitchell. Very well. Mrs. Evans, Mr. Mitchell will see you now. Thank you. Mr. Mitchell's office. Mr. Fogg, just a moment, please. Come in, Mrs. Evans. I was advised against waiting to see you, Mr. Mitchell. I was told it wouldn't be of any use. That depends entirely upon the purpose of your visit. I want you to withdraw as counsel for Cooney. Well, that's rather a large order. Won't you sit down? Of course, I understand how you feel. But what good would it do if I did withdraw from the case? You'd only hire another attorney. Well, there isn't a reputable lawyer in town who would handle a case like that. Even if there were, I'd still ask you to withdraw. Why? Because you have a way of winning cases. Haven't any children, have you? No. I had only one. You must have seen Bobby's picture in the paper at the time that he was stolen from us. Yes. 
Well, I suppose to you, he looked like a lot of other little children. Maybe he was. Not to us, his father and myself. I know, I know. Oh, but you don't know. You can't know if you've never had one of your own. Oh, they're so innocent, Mr. Mitchell. So tiny and helpless and so trusting. The world's a lovely place for them, and grown-ups are their friends. Nobody, no human being would want to hurt a little child. That's true. When you see a baby playing in the sun, so occupied, so important with his foolish little games and sort of talking to himself about... It's such fun to live. Oh, and to suddenly find that he's gone. <coughs> What is it? I'm not into anyone. Thank you. Go on, Mrs. Evans. Oh, I won't take up much more of your time, Mr. It's Mitchell. all right. You know how willing we were to pay the ransom. We didn't have that much, of course, but... we sold our home and everything we had. And then we went to our friends and relatives, and begged and borrowed for the rest to make up the total. Why... We got money from people we never knew, never heard of. Thousands of dollars came to us in, in one and two dollar bills, and sometimes in nickels and dimes from people who had children of their own. It was like a miracle when we finally got the money together. Then we gave them the sum they asked for. And... We got our baby back. Oh. Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. Department 7 of this Honorable Court is now in session. The Honorable Robert Pack, beside him. Be seated. Case of the People versus Michael Cooney. Counsel for both sides ready? Ready for the people. Defense ready, Your Honor. So bring in the defendant. chair yet. Let me have those notes. You may proceed with the impaneling of the jury. The jurors will take their seats in the jury box as their names are called. George Reynolds. I cannot emphasize too strongly the importance of this case to the people of the state. There sits a man who's charged with an unspeakable crime. It isn't only Cooney who is on trial in this court. It's crime itself. Smile. All the enemies of society are on trial today. The judgment of this court can mean only one of two things. Either our so-called civilized society as a jungle unprotected from the attacks of tigers willing to pounce upon even little children, or our law and order are still barricades strong enough to hold at bay the prowling wild beasts. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the principal highlights of this trial had been the brilliant clashes between defense and prosecution. By the way, it is obvious now that Mr. Mitchell will base his defense largely on Cooney's alibi, which proves he was nowhere near the Evans home at the time little Bobby was kidnapped. A packed courtroom in the Cooney trial today was regaled with sensation after sensation as attorney Matt Mitchell swung into cross-examination of the principal witnesses for the prosecution. Has he got it? Well, 
I guess that's what you want. That's it. It must be. It didn't take long to find it. Afternoon papers, Chief. Read them to me. Boy, pitches and everything. The hammering cross-examination of the district attorney, Randolph, has been unsuccessful thus far in shaking the Cooney alibi witnesses. Boy, hooray for our side. <laughs> you know that four-eyed Castro cousin, what's his name, a lefty? I didn't think he had it. <coughs> attorney Matthew Mitchell dropped his usual brilliant technique cue and... Get me the Anthony's sporting goods store, please. Yes. Yes? Hello. Is this the Anthony Sporting Goods store? This is Matthew Mitchell's office. Miss Hayes speaking. We have a letter from the Colt Firearms Company in Toledo saying that on January the 16th, they sent a certain shipment of revolvers to you. Uh, do you keep a record of the purchases of these revolvers? Yes, we have a record of the purchaser of every weapon we sell. Well, could you tell me who bought the revolver with the serial number 326498? Uh, just a moment, I'll look it up for you. Shall I call you back? No, no, I'll hold the wire. The grilling cross-examination of the district attorney wilted Cooney but the state was unable to disturb any of the essential details of his story. Oh, he's a great guy. You can't Hello, Matt. Well, the general and the press. Why all the rush? The case isn't over yet. Sure it is. Why, you've got it all wrapped up. Listen, what are you going to spring for a finish, Matt? We've got to have some new pictures. And a state. I know what you fellas want. Come on. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Chief. Thank you, Charlie. Remember the last time he was over here? Four o'clock in the morning. I sit right there. You boys go on in and make yourselves at home. You know where I'm going. Thanks, Matt. All right with you. That's to prove Mr. Mitchell. Thank you, Bob. Well, it looks like the Cooney case is in the bag. And you're the only one of my employees who hasn't congratulated me. And it's been a tough case, too. You'd better get all the satisfaction out of it you can, because it's your last case. So you think I should retire on my laurels? I mean you'll be forced to retire. Is that a threat or a prediction? Both. That's interesting. If you can spare a few moments from your celebration... I have all the time there is. Sit down. Thanks. While you've been so busy defending a child murderer, I've been working on another case. The Baloo case. Baloo case? Forgotten all about it. I haven't, and I found out a lot of things. Well, what are they? The story that Mabel Wilson tried to tell you was true. That man who entered the cabin pulled a gun and shot Baloo. Gentry? Yes, of course. Baloo had over $20,000 in IOUs from Gentry. I got those IOUs from Mrs. Baloo, and I have the gun that was used by Gentry. I did all that on your time, while I was working for you. Framed, eh? I'm going to the district attorney with what I know, Mr. Mitchell. You'll be indicted for perjury. You'll be disbarred and sent to prison. Yes? Your friends are still waiting for you. Tell them I'm in conference. Mr. Mitchell's in conference. You'll never get Mabel Wilson to back up that statement. Why, she'd be a fool to stand for the perjury rap. I'm not depending on Mabel Wilson. I can prove her story was false. I've got the original stenotype notes that were taken when Mabel Wilson told you her real story and you dictated her defense. And the stenographer that took those notes is another witness. Okay. You did learn something in my office at that. Well, what do you want me to do? Give up the Cooney case. What good will that do? The Cooney case is almost won. 
Your withdrawal as counsel would have a tremendous effect on the jury. They might think that I consider him guilty. Don't you? The trouble with you young attorneys, you believe that everybody is guilty. You forget that a man is innocent until he's proven guilty. Mr. Mitchell, you're a greater criminal than Cooney. Thank you. And you're making it your business to convict me. I'm going to make it my business. All right, go ahead. You think you can scare me? Take your case to Randolph. I'm not afraid of your mealy mouth stuffed shirts. I'll stay here and fight and win. I'll get the best attorney in town. A guy named Mitchell. A guy that's never lost a case. Me, boy. Oh, here's Matt now. Oh, here's to the guy that never loses. Wait a minute. Let's give Matt a drink. Why, there won't be any left with you around. Good work, Matt. Hey, uh, Matt. You know, come on, Matt. We've got to have a new angle on that case, sir. What are you going to use for a finish? Sit down, boy. Oh, excuse me, Miss Hazel. That's all right, Mr. Ford. Anything wrong? Yes. Lots. Oh, you've been working too hard. Any special case bothering you? Yes. A case where I can send a well-known man to prison. And he ought to go to prison. But I don't want him to. I'd miss him. I think maybe I'd have to figure out some way to go to prison with him. Oh, I see. No, you don't. You haven't the foggiest notion. <laughs> That's right, I haven't. But whatever it is, why don't you ask the boss to help you out? He couldn't help me. No. Sure he can. He can do anything. I'll never forget the look on Randolph's face when you trotted out those three surprise witnesses. Who? No, no, I can't see her. Tell her I'm in conference. I can't see anybody. Did sort of take the wind out of it. I won't take up much of your time, Mr. Mitchell, but I would like a moment with you. Why, yes, of course, Mrs. Evans. Will you excuse me, gentlemen? Sure. 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 Won't you sit down? No. This won't take long. What can I do for you, Mrs. Evans? Well, you certainly can't bring my little boy back. But everybody tells me that you're going to get Cooney off. That'll be a 38th victory, won't it? I read that in the paper. Madam, it's the duty of Yes, I lady. know. The funny thing is, they don't put you on trial together with Cooney. You're just as guilty as he is. Cooney knew he was safe in committing his crime. He knew he'd get you for his lawyer. A lawyer who never lost a case. But my dear... Wait! I came here to do you a favor. Oh, you love publicity, don't you? Well, you're going to get some. Don't worry, Mr. Mitchell. I'm not going to shoot you. That would just make you a hero. But I'm going to kill myself in your office before your eyes. Maybe that'll help the district attorney. I want you to know that you're responsible. Perhaps you won't go on trial for it in this world. Oh, if there's another world. Mrs. Evans! Mrs. Evans! Don't! Mr. Mitchell. Mr. Mitchell. 
You've got to snap out of it. You've been sitting here like this for hours. What do you want? Did you come here to gloat? Oh, how can you say that? Especially after what's happened. It wasn't my fault. I know it. I feel terribly sorry for you. I don't want your pity. If there's anything I can do... You... Take your sympathy where it's needed. Leave me alone. Matt Mitchell talking. I'm stepping out in the Cooney case. I'm through with the whole filthy mess. Who gave you that order? I don't take orders. I'm writing Cooney a letter resigning as his attorney at once. Now listen, you take a tip from me. You bow out now and it's curtains for you. Is that a threat? Either Cooney gets off now or... Listen, Castro, I'm not afraid of you or your whole gang. Miss Smith? Yes, sir. I'm in and take a letter. Hello. Find Louis Manos. Yeah, Louis Manos. Tell him to go home and sit right by his phone. I may need him. Where's the turkey's bread? Have you located him yet? Not yet. We've got to find him. He's due in court in ten minutes. Call his house again. I've already called it three times, Miss Hayes. He hasn't been in all night. Well, I was there on and off myself all night. You shouldn't leave him alone at a time like this. Well, don't get yourself in an uproar, Miss Hayes. He's been out all night before. Go down to court. If he isn't there in ten minutes, ask for an adjournment. Say he's sick of bed. Has Mr. Mitchell come in yet? Thank you. He hasn't in yet. Come on, Rocky. We've got to find him. Where do we go first? He generally ends up at Joe's. All right, we'll try there. Look, Louie. Mitchell didn't turn up in court this morning. I guess he meant it when he said he was getting out. Now, you go down and get him and drag him down to the courtroom. And if he won't come, can I leave him where I find him? You're a smart guy, aren't you? A dead mouthpiece can't do us no good. Just get him down to the courtroom. That's all. Have you seen anything of Matt Mitchell this morning? Yes, he just came in. He's in the back room. you in court this morning. That happens to be my business. Yeah? Well, Castro sent us down there to see that you get that court in style. You go back and tell him that I meant what I said. Quit your stalling. Castro's no kidder, and if you want to keep healthy, you'll get to that courtroom and get Cooney off. You tell Castro for me that I've looked after myself for a long while and will still be doing it when he's fried to a crisp along with his pal, Cooney. Mm -hmm. Here he is, Rocky. What are you doing here? Say, we've been nearly crazy trying to find you. Why weren't you in court this morning? That's what we want to know. Since when am I accountable to my employees for my actions? We obtained a recess. We said you were ill. Say, you'd better go home before anybody sees you in this condition. That's it, girlie. You get him cleaned up and get him down to court. And if he can't see reason, you better get his insurance made out in your name. Come on. Oh, please, Mr. Mitchell, let me help you. I want to do something. Miss Hayes, I don't need a nursemaid. Why don't you go home, Chief, and get straightened out? I haven't had a drink all night. I. I don't know why I should apologize to you two. Go on, get back to the office. That's what I'm paying you for, isn't it? Look, you gonna stay here all day? Rocky, I swear to you, by all the saints in heaven, I haven't had a drink. Am I arguing, Chief? 
Time and thinking. I've got to do something for Mrs. Evans. You know, the missus tells me in a case like this, you should send a bouquet of forget-me-nots. I got it. Sit down. What I want you to do is see Cooney. Hey, Red. Mitchell wants me to see Cooney for a minute. How's chances? Let him in, Bill. Okay. What's the matter with you, Cooney? You don't look so good. Where's Mitchell? Didn't he show up? You know, you look like you've got a little touch of yellow fever. Is Mitchell gonna throw this case? Maybe. Maybe not. He's no fool. He's gonna get me out and he knows it. Well, he ain't seen any uh, yet, has he? Hey, my agreement with Mitchell don't call for payment unless he wins this case. Oh, it's in the bag now. Odds are two to one on a quid, even before the jury's gone out. It's all over but the summing up, and that'll cinch it. That is, uh, providing you sweeten the kitty. Meaning what? Meaning you better dig up ten grand like that, see how Mitchell walks out again. And next time, we won't get no adjournment. But, but supposing the verdict goes against me? Ah, it won't. But if it does, he'll have guilt-proof appeal papers for you in no time. On what grounds? Uh, the newly discovered evidence. Ain't no new evidence in this case. You're an awful dope, Cooney. He'll dig up some for you, if he's still interested. Yeah? How much did... did you say Mitchell wants? Uh, 10,000 bucks. Did you get it? <laughs> like Napoleon got Waterloo. Napoleon was defeated at Waterloo. Well, that makes me better than Napoleon. Nick, bring in a serial list of the Evans ransom money. Right away. All right. Look, Rocky, you see what I see? Well, I'll say I do. Pure American greenbacks, better than any beauty prize winner. No, no, look close. A little X mark. That's right. On every one of them. C. C. 103-95-8570. Check. Now, wait a minute. What are you going to do now? Where are you going? You'd be surprised. He's driving me insane. How do you feel? Well, why am I on it with this visit, Matt? I've come to do you a favor. What's this rumor you're dropping the Cooney case? I'm not dropping the Cooney case. Oh, I suspected one of your tricks. What rabbit are you pulling out of the hat this time? The rabbit that's going to make you governor of the state. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. Well, here's a rabbit, and here's his mate. Rabbits are never bachelors, you know. What's this? The list of the serial numbers on the bills paid by Evans as ransom for their child. And this is the money paid me by Cooney as part of my fee. The bills are not only marked, but the serial numbers are the same as on that list. You need no further proof as to Cooney's guilt. You can't do it, Matt. You can't give the prosecution evidence gathered from your own client. Why can't I? It isn't law. I have no respect to the law. Yes, but this... I have done so many unethical things that the Bar Association ought to allow me to do one decent thing, even if I do it the wrong way. You pull so many fast ones that it's hard for me to believe you'd do a thing like this without having some trick up your sleeve. I know it sounds phony. I wouldn't have believed it of myself. But yesterday, a woman by the name of Evans came into my office. Yes, I know. She's not the only one who died, Jim. There was a certain Matthew Mitchell, attorney at law. If you're really sincere in this, Matt... Doesn't that evidence prove that I am sincere? You've got to believe a man who is giving up the most spectacular victory of his career. Now you're going to know what it feels like to be a real hero. I've been a hero too long. You take the glory this time. Hello, Chief. I got your message all right. Any instructions? No, stick around to me. I'll be with Brad.
There you are, Mr. Mitchell. All right. What's up, Mitchell? What are you doing here? We're all washed up. The whole business. The DA's office found out about the dough you paid me. The Dick's trail Rocky after he left you and got the dough. Randolph's got it now. I just left his office. Somebody, somebody must have squealed. Sure, somebody in the mob. Well, I've done all I can for you. Yeah, all right, all right. I, I'll, I'll do anything you say, only, only you gotta get me off. You promised you would, you guaranteed it. Well, I didn't figure on this. You haven't got a chance now. It's curtains for you. Unless... Unless what? Unless you turn state's evidence. But you've got to come clean. You've got to give me the name of every man connected with the Evans kidnapping. But, but the gang would get after me. But Castro would... Never mind about the gang. Never mind about Castro. I'll get Randolph to go easy on you if you do as I say. It's the only chance you've got of saving your hide. Is, is that on the square? You, you try and get me off? How about the mob? Whose hide you're trying to save? Why think of the mob now? How did the DA's office know about the marked bills? Somebody double-crossed you. Mob ain't thinking of you now, are they? Of course, if you want to fry... No. No. Hey, Bill. Yes, Mr. Mitchell? Tell Rocky to bring me some paper and a pen. Okay. You ought to have been down to Palm Gardens last Saturday night. Listen, they got 20 of them fan dancers, see? Well, you call yourself a marksman. You think you got a quick eye. So do I. You ain't got a chance in the world. Listen, they give it that just like lightning, you see? Hey, Rocky. Huh? Mitchell wants you. Wants you to bring a pen and some paper. What's up? I don't know. Unless Cooney wants to make a reservation with the angels. <laughs> angels? <laughs> that mug with angels. Can you imagine it? <laughs> don't forget that's my pen, Rocky. Yeah, so is it. Only six of his mob. One's still missing. Yes, yeah, sir. Louis Manis is still out. We'll have him in soon. Well, there's no use my hanging around. I gotta go by the office and pick up some papers. Well, it was a good day's work, Matt. See you tomorrow in court? Unless we round up Louis. No use starting anything till we got them all. Good night. Good night. You can't get away with it, Mitchell. Not with Manos still out. Riley, send a couple of men after Mitchell. See that he's protected until Manus is brought in. statement to make. If you want any information, see Randolph. <laughs> Miss Hayes in? Yes, sir, but last night... Later, later, later. I've got to see Miss Hayes first. I seek shelter from a terrible fate. The reporters are after me. Don't tell me you're running away from newspaper men. My, don't you look nice today. What are you stalling for? You haven't answered my question. I think it best I stay out of the papers right now. But what you did was great. I'm terribly proud of you. Are you? I always knew you'd do something pretty swell. How did you know about it? Rocky told me. If I were you, I'd want to have my picture on the front page of every newspaper. Have you forgotten about the blue case? 
No. Well, the big hero today will be a bigger heel tomorrow when the evidence gets in the DA's office. Oh, I'm awfully sorry I ever started that case. Why? I deserve what's coming to me. What are you going to do about it? What can I do about it? I can't beat the case, so I'm quitting. And when they try me, I'll just be an ex-lawyer. If I were your lawyer, I'd know how to get you off. What defense have I? There's only one person with evidence against you. A girl by the name of Joan Hayes. Yes, but you can't bribe her. She's a young lady with a high and incorruptible sense of duty. You can't do anything with her. You've forgotten your law, Mr. Mitchell. For a brilliant lawyer, you're awfully stupid. Don't you know that the laws of this state prevent a wife from testifying against her husband? All you have to do is marry the girl, and she'll have to keep her trap shut. Say, hey, what about Gentry? Gentry? Yes, he's committed a crime. Withholding information about a murderer, that makes us accessories after the fact. Oh, darling, must you be legal at a time like this? I don't want to be. Mr. Mitchell, oh, I beg your pardon, but there are two men from the district attorney's office, and they say you are dead. Fog, I think that's grossly exaggerated. They're waiting for you now in your office. They say the police caught that gunman, Louie, and he confessed to shooting you last night. Hey, Chief, the DA's men just found a stiff in your office. Say, what's the matter? Have you all gone crazy? Yes. No, they found him by the safe. He was trying to break in. So that's who got shot. And he thought it was me. Who was it? Well, oh, the cops knew him right away. Some gambler by the name of Gentry. Gentry? Gentry. What a break. This is our lucky day. The reporters are right on the spot, and we'll make every front page in the state. Matthew, Mitchell, and Bride. Isn't she a beauty, Rocky? Oh, she's I'll bet you'll take a swell picture. <laughs> Gorgeous. <laughs> I love Grand.